I'm Cameron, this is Carsideration, and today we have a 1969 Nissan Gloria. So before I let you guys get into this video, I just wanted to say thank you for clicking on this video and uh, watching. So still doing the thousand subscriber giveaway. So if you haven't already, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button. I am giving away these three items here. One, first one uh, is gonna be a book. It's called When Sex Was Safe and Motor Racing Was Bloody Dangerous. Super cool stories from the beginning of Formula One to Le Mans, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, starts at the early history of Formula One and just tells really cool stories all throughout the book. I'm about halfway done with this one and super cool stuff in it. Um, also still giving away the replica Formula One wheel, uh, OZ of course, and then a OZ Super 4 Giada that goes on a GT3 RS. It's the rear wheel, I believe. So uh, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you follow Carsideration on Instagram and uh, I will let you guys get back into this review. Appreciate it. This is a pretty special car. This is the only one in the United States. This is a Gen 3. Uh, so these were produced from 1967 to 1971. Uh, this does have a inline four. It's a two liter, makes uh, about 99 horsepower and it's just under 2000 cc's. The one thing I love about doing old cars is there's not a lot of tech in them, obviously. So it makes my job a lot easier because Really, there's just an engine and then you just get the driving characteristics of the car. Now this is, like I said, the only one in the United States of this vehicle. So it is pretty special. Um, and this was formerly known as Prince. And this is what the Emperor of Japan and the Imperial family would use as their mode of transportation. So this is the pinnacle, in my mind, of a Japanese cruiser. So as usual, I'm gonna take you around the outside. We're gonna go on the inside. I'll show you a few of the little features inside there. And then uh, we're gonna take it for a drive. This has three on the tree, which I have never driven. So this is gonna be an experience for sure. All right, so it's a little windy today, but starting up front, my favorite part is gonna be these headlights. Now there is a cool little Easter egg here in these headlights. These have been retrofitted with LEDs. So the owner said that they used to be candlesticks. Now he can actually see when he drives this at night. But if you notice on top here, there's a little indicator. Now what this indicator does is when your headlight is on, this indicator lights up. So if you're driving at night, this is on all four corners. So you have your left front, your right front, and then on the rear, um, you can see if this is not illuminated at night that you have a headlight or a taillight out. Pretty ingenious little feature. And then you have LED fogs, yellow of course, because every JDM vehicle has to have yellow fogs. It's just, you have to have it. I love the old Nissan logo here too. Um, I just like the font and I like how this vehicle throughout is patinaed. It's been very well taken care of, but there's still like little rust here and there and I love that. It's in its most original shape you can be in, I feel like around to the side now maybe I'll park my RS beside this because online it looked like it was a pretty big vehicle but this is not the whole length is about 186 inches if I remember correctly all right so this looks like a really big car you would imagine but then as soon as you pop up <laughs> it's not much bigger than my focus RS pictures can be deceiving or video can be deceiving my RS is actually, it's definitely taller. I just love the font. And again, you can see where the paint's cracking and stuff like that, but I absolutely love that. Yes, could this car be completely restored? It would, but I feel like it would lose some of its character. And this is lowered on white walls. Um, this would be considered a Japanese VIP. So VIP, they lower the vehicle, they make it look a little wider. Um, but when this car first came to the States, I wanna say, I think it was 2013, um, you could see the whole top of the wheel. So the owner lowered it about, I think it was two inches in the back, inch and a half in the front, and this thing sits pretty. I love it. All right, so a few things here in the engine bay. Um, this is Nissan's H20 engine. Now in 1969, this used to come with three engine options. You had an inline six from Prince, an inline six from Nissan, and then this is the inline four. It's a two liter and it makes about, like I said, 99 horsepower. I think it's 1,938 cc's or so. Um, but in November of 1969, Nissan took away the inline six options and it only came with the H20 Nissan inline four. So this car was clearly built after 1969. If this was in January of 1969, it could have had an inline six. That's how we know this car is at least late 1969. 
and you can see here this is third generation so it's an a30 but along with 1969 in november um, they changed the chassis codes to h20s and then more japanese riding here now an interesting thing um, for the chassis codes and things like that instead of having a vin number like in the us where you have your vin number here with two placards in japan they're etched into the firewall so um, owner just told me that you know this one's here or most of the time in the skylines and things like that they are right over here so if somebody steals a vehicle in order to get rid of that chassis identification code or vin number they have to actually cut out everything re-weld it sand it down and then paint over it again so pretty cool all right jumping into the back seat the one thing i will say about these seats these are the most comfortable seats i think i've ever ever been in i don't know how to describe it they're so soft you just want to like take a nap honestly but you have your little armrest and it's cool when this you know most armrests they flip up but when you flip this up there's this little extra leather pad here and it slides down and out pretty sweet you also have a radio control here uh your fan high low and then of course a cigarette lighter but let's jump to the front seat now there's some cool things up here so behind the steering wheel here i'm going to take you through a few of the things on this interior that are pretty cool uh there's a lot going on here after you start looking behind the steering wheel to where everything is kind of hidden but coming over here you have the original clock here and it does still work which is awesome now this head unit this looks original but it's not it's actually from uh, retro sound so it has bluetooth hands-free uh, driving and talking and things like that so really cool keeps the aesthetic of the vehicle nice because so often you get in older vehicles they've updated the head unit which is understandable and things like that but it doesn't fit the aesthetic of the vehicle this still does now over here pop this down you do have i guess you could say cup holders here but i guess this was for when you'd pull over you'd park and relax or you'd have you know guests in the back here you could set your bottles of wine or do whatever and then you just simply fold it up but inside here there's a yen don't know what it's for but kind of cool uh owner said he found it when he was cleaning out the vehicle when he purchased it and he decided to keep it in here Let's put that back and this is all of course red velvet through here also have some storage options down here as well. Uh, they said like a bottle of vodka fits perfect in there. So they go to Cars and Coffee, they pop this down, put the vodka up here and then have a little glass as well. So kind of cool aesthetic. Um, you have your ashtray right here. And then you have uh, your flashing for your lights. This is your parking brake. Uh, again, another cigarette lighter, your choke. This is for your fog lights here. And then this is your shifting pattern. This is three on the tree. So let me bring the camera around. You can see the pattern. I thought the pattern was gonna be one here, two here, then three here, but it's actually one, three, two, reverse. So this is gonna be really odd to drive. And then coming around to here, um, you have your blinkers right here, and then this is where you control your lights. So one click is gonna be uh, your headlights on, second click is going to be, or sorry, it's gonna go fog lights, headlights, and then you pull it back for brights. So let's click these two off. And then, of course, my favorite thing in old vehicles is the roll down windows. So you have a little quarter window here, opens up perfectly. And the owner says you get a lot of air in here when you do that. And then we'll go down to this roll down window for you young kids that are watching this. You probably never had to experience this, but crank down windows. And it, I love the crank down windows because it just feels like an old watch. If you've ever clicked like an old watch to wind it, it's just so mechanical, it feels awesome. But these seats, these seats again are so comfortable. I love it. Now this headrest here actually, if you are a taller person, you can adjust this headrest and it'll go up. Um, but other than that, that is the interior. So I'm pretty excited to get in and drive this thing, see how it goes. All right, so three on the tree. <laughs> We're gonna give this a shot here. That should be first. Let's let out this clutch. I might stall it, but. All right, all right, all right. We're not stalling it. All right, we're moving. <laughs> we're moving. So let's go to second. Where's second again? Second is all the way up. Okay, so no seat belts either. So this is bizarre. And I'm driving on the right side of the vehicle again. This is my second right-hand drive vehicle that I've driven now. And then third, down. 
Yeah. I just want, don't want to go into first. I was really scared there. All right, now we're in third and we're cruising. Now I'm just going to take this down this private road here. I'm not going to go on the main road because I just don't trust myself with three on the tree in this, but it's actually really quiet in here. And the funny thing is, so this does have the H20 engine in it. Now you would think parts would be very hard to get for that because the, again, this is the only vehicle in the United States of this, but the owner said that this is the same engine that Nissan forklifts use. So he says, it's really like driving a forklift and I have to agree with him. It feels like I'm driving a forklift right now. Oh, clutch in, brakes. Brakes are a little spongy, of course. You know, this is a cruiser. All right, now we're gonna be on a little bit of a hill. Go to first. Oh Lord. I don't think I've... Come on, come on, let it out. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> we got it on the hill. Go to second. So yeah, so when he needed parts for this engine, when he need to, needed to repair it and stuff, he would go down to his local forklift shop and they'd have all the parts ready for him and goes home, works on it, and it's good to go. All right, so driving this is, it's still very bizarre, you know, being on a right hand, in a right hand drive vehicle. Uh, the one thing is the mirrors. The mirrors, I'm so used to looking, you know, off up on your front quarter panel for mirrors, but the mirror on this, it's literally right here. And you can actually see pretty well. And the ride quality is like, it's just a cruiser, you know? Yeah, it's taken a minute to actually get some steering feel, but we're not judging that. We're just judging the cool factor on this because I think this might be the coolest vehicle I've driven so far. I feel like I'm part of like the Yakuza, even though I'm not, I'm obviously not part of the Yakuza, but these vehicles were originally manufactured for the Royal family. And I just feel like I'm a mobster in this thing <laughs> with the white walls, it's lowered. I'm just cruising. This is awesome. And the three on the tree, I've always heard they're really hard to drive. And I, I could, I could see that now it's, uh, Oh gosh, it's just intimidating because it's so counterintuitive. Oof, I, was, uh, I probably should have stayed in second there. This is so cool. I love it. And you know, if you are interested in this vehicle, this vehicle will be on Bring a Trailer here soon. So once the link is up, I will add the link to the bottom of the description so you can see all the photos and everything of it. Um, he also has some Japanese flags that he can put on the front. Let's do the braking here again. So funny thing is, you know when you go to neutral in a normal vehicle, you go like this? Well, neutral on this is back and forth. It's a little odd. Oh, let's stop. All right, brakes, uh, clearly not the best. Now, in 69, November 69, when you uh, got the H20, when they renamed everything, when you got the H20 inline four, um, they did give you an option for disc brakes in the front, so. Okay, all right. Whew. Yeah, we're obviously not gonna do a zero to 60 because I don't think this car would go 60 miles an hour and it, we might need like four miles to do that. I'm scared I went into first. Okay, I didn't go into first. Man, this thing is so cool. Just cruising. I feel like I need a cigar though. <laughs> they just don't make cars like this anymore. And this actually lets in quite a lot of air, so. That's awesome, guys. Well, I know this was a little bit shorter of a video than normal, but I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to be trying to get a few more videos out by the end of the year. And if you haven't, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. And uh, until next time, guys, take care and be safe.